So in this video, we're going to talk about the MOSFET PN junction capacitances. And these are capacitances. And these are CSB and CDB, or the capacitance between the source and the body, and the capacitance between the drain and the body. So if we draw out our capacitors or our MOS MOSFET structure, which you should be able to do in your sleep by now. Uh, I know, I know, I've I've certainly drawn it in my sleep more than more than once before. We've got our metal, our oxide, and our body. And today I'm feeling, I'm feeling like calling it the body, as opposed to the substrate or the bulk, both of which are are perfectly fine terms on on different days. And we know we've got this N plus region here. We've got our source, and we've got our drain over here and this is also an n plus region okay so that's our that's our full mosfet uh structure and we know that uh once since this is a p type region since this is a p type region and this is an n type region we're going to have a pn junction formed so we're going to have this depletion region uh and let's just assume for now that the body's grounded so when vs equals zero we're going to have a certain depletion region between the edge of the source and the edge of the body. And these are going to contain negatively charged acceptors that can't really move around. So it's going to contain negatively charged acceptors. And the drain will also have this depletion region, but we're going to focus on the source because the analysis is exactly the same either way. And so this, uh, this N region has a bunch of negatively charged electrons that are free to move around. Similarly, this p-type body has a bunch of positively charged holes that are free to move around. And I'm omitting the ions that counterbalance the charge that make everything neutral because those can't move. Um, and so we don't really care about them here. And these negative charges and these positive charges are separated by the depletion region. We're gonna call this uh, depletion region uh, let's call it XD0, because uh, it's the depletion region, let's say, when Vs equals 0. So when Vs equals 0, this is the width of the depletion region. So this is a capacitor. This is a capacitor. Because we've got a separation of positive charges and negative charges, each of which can move around. So, uh, And when we've got those negative charges on the edge of the depletion region, and those positive charges on the other end of the depletion region, and they don't have any uh, ions to counterbalance them in the vicinity, we're going to get this electric field pointing between the two. And so this is basically a parallel plate capacitor. It's a parallel plate capacitor where these electrons will accumulate on one side and the holes will accumulate on the other. And if we've got the voltage pointing in the other direction, uh, that's that's just fine as well. So we can have we can have negative charges and positive charges on the opposite side. Uh, it's just that if the electrons move away, the electrons move away, then we're left with positively charged ions near the edge. And these ions themselves can't move, but the electrons can move to expose them. So that's okay. And similarly, we've got negatively charged ions on this side. So we've got an electric field between the two plates. And my point in showing you this is just to demonstrate that uh, this capacitance works both ways. So it's not that negative charges can only be on this side and positive charges can only be on this side. Because as the charges move, they expose ions, which act exactly in the same way. So what is the capacitance? Uh, well, we can calculate the capacitance per unit area of this structure, if we just if we were to fold this out, so imagine we're folding out this depletion region, we're folding out this uh, this source. Imagine it's just a source, a flat source, and a flat body, and the depletion region inside with a bunch of negatively charged ions. Then the capacitance per unit area of this capacitor is just the permittivity, as we'd expect. Uh, in this case, it's the permittivity of silicon. 
divided by the depletion region thickness. So this is the capacitance per unit area. And so all we need now is to figure out this area. And so I've, I've erased the whole, uh, whole source. Let's replace it with just this, uh, with this rectangle. Let's make it easier to visualize these areas. So the first area, because um, we know that this is a three-dimensional structure, this drain, we can model it kind of as a rectangle or a rectangular prism. Uh, we know that the area is going to have different components. First, we have this bottom area. So this area of the bottom, uh, which is going to be forming a PN junction with the bottom of the substrate. Um, we know we also have got this area of the sides to worry about. So there's these two sides, and they extend back into the uh, back into the substrate. So if we were to draw this out further, uh, the sides would be visible like this. Um, so we've got and we've got two of these sides. So it's we need to worry about two times the area of each of these sides. And then we've also got this face. So we've got this this face here. And let me let me draw that in different colors so it's more obvious. We've got this face. Uh, and we've got two of them, one on each side. So two times the area of each of these faces. Because in reality, this substrate extends uh, eff effectively forever, right? So this, I've only drawn a two-dimensional slice of the transistor. But eventually, this drain region is going to end. And it's going to have a face. Um, so we've got each of these areas to worry about in turn. Now, how do we figure out what the actual areas are? Well, part of it is from just the dimensions. So we'd need to know, first of all, the dimensions of this well. We need to know how long it is, uh, how thick it is, or how, how wide it is, how thick it is, and how long it is. And so all we need to know is this length, LS, this height, HS, and this width, W. Uh, or I guess in the case of the drain, uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and so we can calculate the total area. Uh, and let's, let's first calculate the area of the sides and the areas of the face. So if we've got two times the area of each face uh, plus two times the area of each side, that's just equal to, in total, um, two times, what is the area of the face? LS times HS uh, plus two times the area of the side, which is uh, W times HS. Now, there's one subtlety here uh, that I haven't mentioned, and that's that this side, this side here, uh, is right next to the channel. So it's right next to the channel. And we might, if there's a channel formed, uh, if there's a bunch of mobile electrons here, then there's going to be no separation between the charge in this N region and the charge in this channel or the charge of the rest of the, the body. There's going to be no, no depletion region here that we have to worry about. So typically, we only, we only look at one um, we only consider one area of the side. So instead of two times the area of the side, it's actually one. Uh, so we only care about this side, the side that's not facing the channel. So that's the total area. And uh, we could factor this. Um, and we, we will be factoring things a bunch in uh, electrical engineering in general. So you're, you're going to want to get used to it. Uh, into HS times W plus 2 times LS. Now, why do we do this? Um, because HS, we don't control. Uh, so we don't control this. As designers, we don't get any say in what this is. Uh, we only control this sum. And we like to separate things into things that we can control and things that we can't. And things that we can't control, we like to just lump into a single constant because it makes our lives much easier in terms of the analysis. And so if we want to know the total capacitance, uh, and this is called the capacitance of the sidewall, um, this is just equal to our permittivity, so the capacitance per unit area that we calculated over here, uh, per unit area times HS, 
times W plus two times LS. And so that's the capacitance of all of the sides of the, of the MOSFET. So this side, uh, this side, which we've ignored and these two faces. And so we like to typically, you'll be given this all lumped together as a single constant uh, called CJ sidewall or the junction capacitance per unit length. Uh, and it's, it's super awkward. Yeah, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these constant, this constants that we use are really awkward. Having units of farads per, per meter uh, is, is weird, especially since we just write it as C, but that's just part of the notation that you'll have to get used to. So now we'll, now we need to look at the area of the bottom. So what's the area of the bottom? Well, it's just this LS times uh, times W. So uh, C bot is just equal to same thing, epsilon silicon over XD naught times LS times W. Now, I've, uh, I've told a little lie here, uh, and that's the, the bottom, the doping is not constant is not constant throughout uh, throughout the semiconductor. And for the calculation of this capacitance, that turns out to be rather important. And so instead of epsilon silicon over XD naught, uh, we typically replace this by just one capacitance constant, Cj. And uh, so Cj times Ls times W. So CJ has units of capacitance per area or farads per meter squared. Uh, CJ sidewall has units of farads per meter. It's kind of awkward, but uh, you learn to infer what the units should be of, of, a, of a given constant. So we have the sidewall capacitance and we have the bottom capacitance. So altogether, uh, the capa the total capacitance, uh, the total capacitance of all of our PN junction capacitors between the source and the body. So we can write this as rewrite this as CSB is just equal to these two capacitances. So CJ sidewall times W plus two LS plus CJ times W times LS. And that's it. Um, the only only thing we need to worry about is these CJs and CJ sidewalls, we assumed that the depletion region was constant. We assumed it was just XD naught. But uh, we know that the depletion region changes. So as VSB, the voltage between the source and the body increases, the depletion region width is also going to increase. And as the width increases, since capacitance is epsilon divided by the width, we would expect the capacitance to decrease. And indeed it does. Um, and the amount it decreases by is just the same amount that the depletion width increases by, which is just one plus VSB over uh, the built-in potential of that PN junction. And for this capacitance, for the bottom capacitance, C bottom, uh, this isn't exactly correct, so you sometimes see it written as one plus VSB over VBI to the one third uh, instead of this square root here. But that's that's just because the doping isn't abrupt. If we assume that it is, then we just need to add in this factor, this voltage voltage factor here, and that's because the depletion width changes as the as VSB changes. And so this is our final equation. This is our equation for CSB. And you can do the same exact kind of analysis with CDB, the capacitance between the drain and the body, except instead of VSB, you'll replace VSB with VDB. And so that's that's it. Um, it's It might look a little complicated, but just try and reduce it to each of the each of the component capacitances and you'll understand where everything is coming from. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.